How do you solve problems with mixed units of measurement? In this lesson you will learn how to solve problems with mixed units of measurement by converting measurements to a common unit. Let's review metric system conversions. In converting a larger unit to a smaller unit you have to multiply by a power of 10 by moving the decimal point to the right. In this problem we are converting meters to millimeters. First you must determine how many places to move the decimal point. Move the decimal point one place to the right the same number of times it takes to move from the column of the larger unit to the column of the smaller unit. In this problem we need to move the decimal point three places. So starting from the decimal point after the two we move the decimal three places. Remember to annex zeros as you move the decimal point. So two meters equal two thousand millimeters. In converting a smaller unit to a larger unit, you have to divide by moving the decimal point to the left. In this problem, we are converting millimeters to meters. First, you must determine how many places to move the decimal point. Move the decimal point one place to the left the same number of times it takes to move from the column of the smaller unit to the column of the larger unit. In this problem, we need to move the decimal point three places to the left. So, starting from the decimal point after the two, we move the decimal three places to the left. Don't forget to annex zeros as you move the decimal point. So two millimeters equals two thousandths meters. Solving problems with mixed units of measurement. Often you will have to solve problems that involve more than one unit of measurement. It's difficult to tell how these measurements compare because each one is given in a different unit. Obviously, it is necessary to convert these measurements to a common unit. It really doesn't matter which unit you choose to convert the other units to, but sometimes it's easier to convert them to the smallest unit because it involves multiplying, which usually means less decimal points to worry about when making your final calculations. With that in mind, the smallest unit of the three given here is centimeters. Before we multiply to make our conversions, we have to figure out how many places to move the decimal point. We've been using our metric conversion chart to do that. This time, instead of using the whole chart, we are just going to use the first letter of each prefix. That gives us the letters K, H, D, B, D, C, M. Now all we have to do is memorize the order of these letters. Many students use mnemonic devices to help them remember things. One such mnemonic device is to create a memorable phrase where the first letter of each word of the phrase begins with the same letters you want to remember. A common mnemonic phrase for the metric conversion chart is King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. Now using the simplified version of the conversion chart, we can convert all of the units in the previous problem to centimeters. Since we are converting to centimeters, a centimeter will represent the whole unit or one, so we should place a decimal point after the centimeters column. The first measurement to convert to centimeters is five and two tenths meters. Looking at the chart, we see that we must make two moves to the right to get from the meters column to the centimeters column. So that means we move the decimal point in five and two tenths meters two places to the right. Remember to annex a zero in the centimeters column. So five and two tenths meters equals 520 centimeters. Let's go back to our measurements and insert 520 centimeters in for five and two tenths meters. Next, we have to convert five thousandths kilometers to centimeters. Looking at a chart, that is five moves between those two units. So we move the decimal point five places to the right after annexing zeros in the meters column and the decimeters column. We have an answer of 500 centimeters. Let's put 500 centimeters into our measurements. Now we can add these measurements because they are all given in a common unit. Let's look at a real life problem. 
The Martinez family recycles everything, especially paper. On Monday, they put five kilograms of used paper in the recycle bin. On Tuesday, they recycled twice what they had on Monday. But on Wednesday, they only recycled 98 grams of paper. How much paper did they recycle in total all three days? First thing we need to do is make sure we understand what the problem is asking us. How much paper did they recycle in total all three days? Let's pick out the important information, five kilograms, on Monday, Tuesday, they recycled twice what they did on Monday, and on Wednesday, they recycled 98 grams. We want to convert all measurements to the smallest unit, which in this case is grams. Let's use our conversion chart, King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk, and we are going to convert grams, which makes it our whole unit, so we'll put the decimal point after that column. We must multiply to convert 5 kilograms to grams, which means moving the decimal point three places to the right. Now let's move the decimal point after the 5 in kilograms three places. Don't forget to annex zeros, and our answer is 5,000 grams. Now we go back to our problem, and we can see that 5 kilograms is the same as 5,000 grams. Then on Tuesday, they recycled twice that much, so 5,000 times 2 is 10,000 grams. Now if I take that 10,000 grams and add the 98 grams they recycled on Wednesday, I have a total of 10,098 grams. And then finally, I need to go back and add the 5,000 grams that they recycled on Monday for a total of 15,098 grams. In this lesson, you learn how to solve problems with mixed units of measurement by converting measurements to a common unit.